potentially final map. Astralis took train just about an OT. My name is Mitch. With me is the wonderful Dean. And we're rolling into the pistol round already. Freiburg up close to the doors. Looks like he's going to be the first point of contact. Astralis slowly shift into the bottom of mid. Yeah, with the Xbox smoke down, that could signal that they want to move up for the short control, but with most of the players coming out through lower tunnels and letting that smoke now move away, I think it's more so faking that they could have moved up through short already and then peeking in towards middle. But as you said, with a couple players stacked up towards this area, it is the USPs so far that are just picking off the headshots. A very firm two-man advantage to kick this round off for Dig, and Astralis seemingly now reacting to that quickly to bring it on towards A, where already we've seen them reposition. They have a couple players set up over towards long. It is... Just the massacres they're coming forward. No more kills, but so much damage being done, just making this that much easier for the dig players to go ahead and finish it off. And Freiburg gets all three, just topping away, very patient. And yeah, Dignitas with a very strong start here on Dust 2, picking up that pistol round. Coming into this one, I mean, it's going to be difficult for Dignitas for sure. Picking up this pistol round certainly helps them. But the last three games they played here on Dust 2, unfortunately, they have struggled a bit, dropping three of them 16 and 11. To be fair, though, the match before that was the one where they were able to upset Fnatic 16-14. But also, it's a really good map for Astralis for the past month or so. They've only lost it once to Mouse Sports in overtime. So I'm expecting an, a, a relatively competitive one, but I am going to stick with Astralis for the 2-0, if I'm being honest. Yeah, we saw a very good performance from them in the previous, and it's hard not to favor Astralis in most series. But Dignitas are that unpredictable team. When it comes to settling a matchup, you don't know. They're going to lose this map to some decent level teams and then beat Fnatic on it when they're number one at the time. You just can't predict it. So as we move in, Dust 2, we always say it's a coin flip. Oh, there's the nade. There's the kill. With it, a double as well. Get right, shutting them down. The USP comes out to finish it off with a 4K. That puts a quick end to Astralis's... I mean, Eco for the most part, but the scout they had in play. And Device happy to take a double scout. So he took it in the previous round to back up the pistols. And he takes it now to rock on through and look to take down those AKs. Yeah, I mean, it gave them a good chance in the previous round to keep the pressure on. If the scout had have gotten a few tags in, then the pistols, of course, at that point, maybe could have gotten a few kills. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. It was a flawless one. After that nade from Get Right, just pretty much destroying the push already. Oh, we've actually got a dropout. Get Right is disconnected. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've got info. He from was the so admins. good, the server couldn't handle it. It could be that uh, if it is, the admins are covering something up <laughs> because it's a conspiracy. <laughs> he's got a, a keyboard issue, is what we've been told. So they'll put it back live once he gets back on the server. For now, he's doing the typical unplug it, plug it back in. Built T on my keyboard earlier. Luckily, it's all good. But get right, evidently, not so lucky. And we're getting late into the night. These kind of tech issues arise, Dean. You'll be happy to know we're we're about 10 minutes away from our 11th hour of broadcast. So it's been a long one. And I fear for us, honestly, if this tech pause goes on long, the things we may end up talking about, oh, Lord, things are going to go bad. But if we take a look at just does 2 in general, you can expand a little bit on what you were saying there earlier. The fact that Astralis are good on this map is, I mean, it, it's well known. They're a solid team, and any solid team is going to put up a, a slightly above average, you'd imagine, result on um, slightly above 50% results on Dust 2. Coin flip map. And I say that because there's a lot less tactics to it than some of the others. I mean, I'm telling you guys, if you're up this late watching Counter-Strike, pretty sure you already know that. But it's a map that's all about... Late round, you set up in defaults, you look for aggression, and then you make the, those late round decisions based on the little snippets of information you get. But mostly, it's about aiming. It's about taking those duels one at a time. We don't see executes playing as much. There's a very limited bag of strategies that we can deploy. When you look at Astralis's past games, they took down Heretics here, 16-10, to 10, who, at a glimpse, if you don't watch anything below top 10 teams, you might think, well, yeah, of course they, of course they did. Come on. But you have to also remember that Heretics have been upsetting a lot of teams recently. I mean, their results as of late have been incredibly impressive. And really, Astralis don't have any super one-sided losses, and any losses they do have are Mouse Sports, Fnatic, Navi, oh. nothing terrible. We have bad things. Steam's down, yes. Oh, we do have bad no. <laughs> no. That means Get Right is going to have a bit of trouble getting back in until it comes up. So it he's closed his Tuesday game, has night, he? Tuesday night, right? Yeah, it's, it this is during the maintenance, usually. 
So if he had a keyboard issue, right? So I guess, yeah, he would have restarted his, his computer to see if mm. that would maybe uh, fix it or something. Maybe restart his game to see if it would register then. Oh, of all the times. And you're very right, Dean. Tuesday night is when the maintenance comes in for Steam servers. Uh, so it seems like we're talking about 10 minutes or so. Uh, that is a very flexible 10 minutes. It could be two. It could be 20. We don't know. So what we'll do then, Dean, if it's all right with you, is we'll and Chad, I guess, if you guys are cool with it, we'll throw it over to the break. The game is going back live, guys. It's going to be a, a few minutes now. Get Right has successfully logged back in. So we're looking good. Dignitas are up 2-0 if you guys are just joining us. My name is Mitch. With me is Dean. Both of us have arrived back on the server. We're not... We haven't fallen asleep in a little downtime. And lucky it was a quick one. The only reason we got to throw it to a break is you never know. Could be here for 20 minutes and then you're gonna, you, we're, you know, the quality of our stories are going to go down significantly over that time. <laughs> yeah, and and sanity as well a little bit. Oh, 100%. It's been 11 hours, Dean. I fear what would happen if we just open mic this for, <laughs> for 20 minutes. <laughs> we, would, we would not be back Dangerous. next week. Let's say that say it that way. Um, I, I would like to just listen to you sing it, though. <laughs> you could could have sang all the, the songs that are normally that in, the ad rota in the rotation while we're on break. Yeah, I think I'll that would have been more entertaining. But... For next time, Dean, I'm going to print out the lyrics to every song, and I'm going to ask Perfect. yourself for just the music, no vocals, and we'll go through it that way. It'll be some good fun. yeah. And, and we'll do it. Uh... <laughs> it's actually just for pause screens in general. So 15 minutes between the maths, just me singing. Everyone's going to love it. It's going to be the next big thing. Look, the boys are back in town, and Dignitas, they're looking to roll. Two to zero. They started it out well, but finally we're ready to jump in. Is it frozen? Okay. It was... I, Not for was, me. I was scared, but it's it's unfrozen. As Astralis get themselves a buyout, as we said before, they had AKs. They have Device on a scout. This is a, a bit of a mixed bag, but it's because Device wanted the scout in the previous round to hopefully support the pistols, but they didn't get a whole lot with it. In fact, they got nothing. Dignitas get to lose a player. Zero deaths, and that builds up a nice little bankroll. And they're playing this one as a bonus, even with two SMGs and two FAMAS in play. Yeah, not like they have a lot, though, in the reserve. They did, of mm -hmm. course, actually survive with zero players in that previous round, so it, it, it's a very difficult one for them. If they were to lose it, they really wouldn't be able to get the best of buys in the following round. So it is, of course, a good opportunity for Astralis to get going here early with their gun rounds on the T side. Early on, finding the short control. I don't think the CTs are, are, are really going to look to challenge just too aggressively. They have the deep Molotov, which did cut through pre-off from his teammates for a little while. And eventually, a nade will come in and land right in his face. So that's a good bit of damage eventually being connected. And that certainly helps out when you have these weaker weapons. But of course, giving up that short control already, there's still quite a bit of time for Astralis to work with. Obviously, they don't have to commit off this. But just kind of the default position that you want to be finding when you're playing this, this kind of split pick style. And then their flash coming in. They're not moving off of these at all. So it, it's not doing a lot other than slightly delaying Astralis potentially. Even giving the AK over to the healthier player to do pre taking the scout instead. Well, it makes sense. Device is certainly going to fare a little bit better in heads up aim duels. All Zerk. He's going to hear this smoke coming through, and it's time to hightail it to B. He's the only player around here. And in trouble, no utility either. His teammates can't support him. He's got to win the fights with the FAMAS, and he can't get it done. Now the site's going to be overrun, and Dignitas left in a position where, I mean, yes, they've got a little bit of money in their pockets, but it is not fantastic. I think saving might be the way they go with it. And you don't see a single player move. They're holding down the fort, so absolutely. They're going to look to carry these weapons through, and Astralis, on the back of one kill, have won the round. Yeah, I mean, considering it was the five kills in the previous round from them, despite losing it, that is, as I said, kind of now coming back to hunt Dig a little bit. They had the pause, they had a little bit of time to think about it at least, and coming back into that opening gun round, unfortunately, they aren't able to make the weaker weapons work. That one kill, as you said, pretty much confirming the round. At least with these four weapons being saved over, we should see a pretty strong buy. It's only 1,400, obviously, they'll get in, but you would imagine maybe Get Right drops that Famas over to Hulzerk, potentially gets himself the M4, and they will have a relatively okay investment. Obviously, you'll see the others then being able to fly back up at the utility, although some of them could consider actually upgrading off of the MP9s as well. That could be the case for Exist and Forest, since they already have armor, they could still get some nades behind them also. It depends whether they want to give themselves kind of the best chance to get this round win, or whether they want to keep a little bit of money. I think, yeah, they're, they're kind of willing more so to focus on having the full set of nades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does make a lot of sense. 
the other downside being that you're backing up SMGs with those nades, but the, the possibility to slow down those T's, allow your teammates to go in for the duels. They've got two M4s of FAMAS. It, it's not terrible. But Molly actually going to take away Get Right. They know he's close, but they can't swing on him. Molotov stopping a lot of that action that could have come through. But afterwards, Astralis look into short. That's where they want to move. The Molly up close just to make sure no one's holding it. They've got plenty of flashes that they can lob on through, but it's going to be a run boost on the back of one. Right through the molly that just faded. Small ticket damage, but it was worthwhile. As they've now got short on lockdown, it's time to work on long. That's smoked off. Freiburg is holding that angle, and it's very difficult to deal with him by him by yourself. And Zipnix, as you can see, just tucks in and plays that much slower, hoping that perhaps he'll get distracted as they begin to move forward. The smoke up close allows them to set up for an actual smoke take, one we mentioned in the first game of the day, <laughs> you probably weren't here for, it was 11 hours ago, that this doesn't come out in the CIS region much, but you get a full smoke execute to cancel out anybody playing on long, that when an elevator CT allows you to drop down, this is, it gives you so, so much, so many angles to play from as you move in towards the bomb site. And already, Dignitas have completely conceded control, going all the way into long, hoping to catch a player coming out late, but it's a good thing the Zipnix has gone over to short. He's just going to hold down there with his buddies. And again, a difficult retake for Dignitas to go for. Do they want to? I mean, they're slowly creeping forward. If they find this kill quickly on Glaive, just up to the left here to CT spawn, maybe there is some hope, but it's not going to be easy. I mean, as you said, the short control of most of the Astralis players, giving them the chance to play off the bomb. Exist will be able to find that opening, but they need to go quickly. They have no more utility remaining. Dupree is delaying them quite massively here from short and eventually actually finding himself a couple of kills. That was ambitious for us to jump up, but it's all on Halzer. Gets that first kill, but just doesn't have time. It's no longer possible. Zipex isn't going to be peeking at all. Yet backed away on short, realizes he is now one, of course, on time. And also that the final player wasn't able to live. Halzer goes down with the bomb. So no weapons being saved over this time from Dig. It was a five on five as the bomb got planted. So it was an awkward spot for them to be in, whether they wanted to go for the retake or save. And I don't think you can really fault them for either decision. Unfortunately, though, it didn't work out. And now they are left on the eco as Astralis will be claiming themselves the lead very likely. Unless these pistols can come up absolutely, uh, absolutely heroic from this position. It'll have to be a little bit of a miracle. I mean, we've seen more happen with less. But against a team like Astralis, you don't expect them to be losing a lot up against just these three upgraded pistols. Why is the rum gone and where are the guns gone? Those are the questions that we could be asking. Unfortunately, a lot of the guns have become invisible. You might have noticed since the previous round. Oh, was that happened to and you again? So it has, uh, just due to the GoTV restarting earlier on. It's so happened to you a few times today, but yeah, not me, surprisingly. Not being lucky, am I? But we'll, we'll sort that out after this round. For now, I guarantee you the CTs do not have rifles in their hands. As you can see, they are just working with pistols and they're being torn apart at that. An AK in the hands of Magisk and every other terrorist. So it makes it very easy to follow what they're shooting with. As they move on forward to just try to hunt these guys down. Once this round ends, I'll throw things over to the pause screen quickly with no music. Don't worry, you shall not be bombarded with the tunes. Uh, but I'll just retry the server, reconnect to it. And we should be good to go with not invisible weapons. Eagling away. Forest. Okay, Forest if they got one. one more. One more kill and we're happy nearly lining them up there that was actually decent damage because with forest having the deagle now there's a couple players within just one body shot dupree not quite though i don't believe you see the first one being hit he does follow up with another but ends up burning him alive dupree from the grave is the one to finish him off overall again with so little that they need we're back in perfect okay so with that issue fixed and a banner in front of glaive's face unfortunately he sold his invisible censored. skins That's yeah. what if you want to buy invisible... Oh, we don't have X-Ray on. We're going to have to do that again after this round. Things are... Unlucky. Things are just spiraling out of control, Dean. It's it's too late at night. I'm going mental. But there are four players behind that smoke. And as of yet exist, not hitting a single one. Eventually connecting something. But Magisk, he gets annoyed. He doesn't like being poked and he answers back with his own kill. Look at this from Forrest's perspective. Player up above the smoke, but he takes him down and traded out by the Molotov. Fortunately, Get Right slips into the bomb site and grabs a double. All of a sudden, Device is in a 1v3. A flank coming through late from Freiburg. This gives him a chance. A 1v1 on the side. He spots the player. Good shot. Bomb is down. And it looks like Halzerk is moving forward. He needs to be careful. And if they don't show contact in the next 10 seconds or so, I think he's actually going to start to get a read that someone might be coming from tunnels.
He should, cer he should, he should certainly begin to realize that it's a possibility at this point. I think he's just going to go ahead and top that bomb, see if he can bait the peek in from mid, potentially. As no one peeks in, I think he may realize that's the case. Because if they were both there, they per perhaps would have peeked in from both angles at the same time. Or even tried to swing in together. The smoke goes down towards the door again to give him a little bit less to worry about. But this time he actually will stick to bomb plan. So that's at least a bit of extra money confirmed for Astralis. And of course, this is still, still actually extremely winnable for Device. If you can find them pushing in, the potential one-on-ones are definitely there. And I believe at this point, they just want to group up instead. Freiburg not wanting to make noise as, as he moves his way back down. So he had to take a little bit of time actually retreating back to join Bahal Zerk, and now as they move in, the Vice, he has a pretty solid position to try and hold down that door, but doesn't hit the spray. Doesn't even do some any damage at all, apparently. And Halzerk just swings back in, gets the kill, and there it is. Dig, they get their third round, they tie it back up. But with only two surviving, obviously, that's not the best position for Dig to be in. The reinvestment is going to cost them most of their money, and the only man for Astralis who's kind of struggling for economy is Dupree. And even then, he has 3600, so he can probably make it work, as the rest of them will be buying in. Yeah, he's gone ahead and got himself the Galil, so not too big of a deal. There's a chance for Astralis to try and immediately bounce back, but Dig, they also have the, the chance, of course, to try and actually chain some rounds together, and with that, even get themselves into a, a decent lead here early on on the CT side, potentially. Ooh. Straight down suicide. The Vice is not being shy with this off early on. I was hoping to find an open, and oh, the wall bank coming in from Forrest right there, expecting it because of the flash that came over, I'd imagine. Didn't quite manage to connect it, but he had the right read. Eventually being forced to fall back, though, so early on Astralis, they're able to at least cover some ground on mid, but with three players grouped up in tunnels, it looks like B again is going to be their main focus. It certainly does. Smoked out for now, though. The utility is starting to wane on the CT side. How many players... Smoke still actually no, uh, Forest has still got one to work with, but they flash out. They're just gonna blitz towards him. Exist missing the shots. This is all on Forest. Get right comes in to help from the doors, but he is pretty much locked out now. He continues contesting. And in fact, good for a frag, but the spray is just a little bit too much through the wood. Zipnix takes him down and a man advantage to play with for Astralis. The retake on B not quite as easy as the one that they faced before. Halzerk and Freiburg, the players left to deal with it once again. But as time ticks on and nobody over peaks, extends and gives an advantage away, it is time for Dignitas to just go and save for another day. The reality is getting into B, it's difficult enough um, in a two versus two or a situation like that, even on. But when you're at a man disadvantage, things are much more difficult. You add into the situation the AWP. And it just isn't worth either the risk and indeed the added complication of trying to enter that site with an op. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Mm -hmm. Even with the two rifles, two on three, still wouldn't have been too favorable. Overall, a pretty like convincing round for Astralis. The fact that two weapons are saved actually doesn't matter at all, really, does it? Because Dignitas, they can't invest into this one. They've got 2k on two players, get right up, just above three. You would be talking pistols and armor alongside an AWP and an M4. And so it is just the choice to go to a Deagle for Exist. Device getting tagged up early on, though. That is a good start. Yeah, especially with the pistols that you mentioned. It makes it a lot easier for them if they have the chance to fight up against the Vice to have an easier time in general just taking them down. But haven't taken damage immediately in this round. Astralis react. They commit to B and find that it is only Forrest not really having any sort of weaponry to defend the bomb site. He does instantly go down and... I think, again, the op and the M4 are likely to be saved over the op, especially just because in this next round, otherwise they won't be able to afford it unless Get Right drops it over. Which, of course, you'd prefer not to happen because otherwise he could get himself a lot of extra utility. So if it can be saved, that is a good option. And yeah, that's clearly the goal right now. Existing Get Right can certainly try and cause some further damage. Even potentially steal away more weapons for them to bring into this next round. But it's pretty much a fifth round now confirmed. Astralis getting themselves two into the lead. Yeah, Dupree needs to fall back already being low. He can't continue to fight that. Yeah, indeed, bailing out of there, not wanting to give over another weapon. It's making sense. Dignitas, though, do stick aggressive with Exist. And get right down towards the lower tunnels. But no opportunities being presented. Just avoid giving them any extra cash. Why not? Took it away for another day. But the two weapons saved through to this round do definitely lighten the burden of reinvesting. Astralis, they're not feeling that burden. They are running free with five rounds and a lot of money built up. 
Dignitas need this one to slow down that T side, not just in how far ahead that they're running with the scoreline, but also with the difference in finances growing ever and ever more in favor of that T side. They don't want to get to the point where they can't force Astralis down to an eco and get that free round after. This is going to start with a very fast push to B. Yeah, not going to be letting up on the gas at all, really. Dupree already finding that first open and even waits for Magisk to get ready at the door as he swings in instead while Exist was fully focused on the window. It goes down and again, this round is over before it even begins. There's no option for Dig other than to save these three weapons. Off the back of a 2900 in the next round, they'll give enough for Get Right and Halzerk to drop so they will be able to scrape together another buy. Although Forst and Exist could also buy for themselves, so they might just go for that, but... The point stands, Astralis are leading 6-3, right. to three, and very convincingly, yeah, Get Right has caught Glaive off guard, but Dupree was also behind him, so it was kind of a, a whole situation. <laughs> flanker getting flanked by a flanker, fair enough. The AWP going to be spotted of Halzerk in just a second, flash around the corner, I think that blinded both of them, it did. Halzerk's in trouble, moving forward, looks for another around the corner, but actually, they're not able to deal with the vice at all. He picks himself a double, closing that out. Six to three. And look at the lack of respect Astralis are showing Dignitas. They straight rush down middle outdoors. Barely any utility being used up. The first or one of the first, the smoke that crosses them over to the B site, covers off CT completely, or the two smokes, I should say. The molly behind it. And within the first 25, 30 seconds, they're on B. Dignitas were so caught off guard by that. Yeah, which is kind of surprising. The vice not actually going to be hitting that off shot there, though. Going towards the scout player early on, taking a bit of damage himself, but the rest of his team in the meantime are fighting out towards the long control, where surprisingly one player challenged. I think Halzerk was also trying to follow up. They were probably trying to get up close with those pistols, but losing one immediately then forces Halzerk back off towards the car. So a poor start into this round for Dig, where they have a poor buy. So we're not really expecting too much. It should be 7 to 3 for Astralis before we get the guns again in play in the hands of the Swedes. And also the one Norwegian, he can't be, can't be forgotten. The last time we had Dignitas on stream, unfortunately he had a Swedish flag beside his name. We don't know why that happened. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you turned here. off the flag, he went insane. I remember that as well. But yeah, being cleaned up right now, the eco isn't amounting to much. No, it, it really isn't. Not too much of a task for Astralis to deal with. Freiburg moving towards the top of middle, takes a USP, but... Oh, he actually hears the steps. Slaves peeking out on mid, though. Ah, it doesn't matter. He had two people that were presumably going to take him down. To leave Forrest by himself. Spotted out now from top and bottom mid. Three players looking at him as he walks through this doorway. Good nade. Good spam. Close to getting the frag. Three. This is a disaster, honestly, for Dignitas. Dupree, Device, and Machisk all within one hit of a deagle. And they survived the round. Again, it is a testament to how strategically Astralis played, even down to who is fighting what. We see so many teams, Dean, where we're looking at a player going, oh, he's... 40 HP, he's not going to peek the deagles, and all of a sudden he's dead, because he's swung out to try and get a couple of extra frags, whereas Astralis are happy that once the first player takes a fight, he's 40 HP, oh, he's going to the back of the pack. To the back of the pack, yeah. yeah. We had the same thing in mind there. I knew where you were going, Mitch. <laughs> I finished your sandwich. That's what happens, team. We've known each other too long. Ooh, the vice doesn't care. He was straight up short. This is such a quick place play, and you can see they gamble towards B because of those last few gun rounds. Freiburg is doing what he can, and he does give them a double, but the Molotov not quite extinguished. Oh. Forces him actually to be taken low and eventually finished off through the gap in the smoke. Suddenly, it's all being pulled in favor of Zipix. Glaive chimes in with one on to get right, and despite Freiburg's best efforts, it is nowhere near enough for Dignitas to get themselves another round. It's all on exist. Wow, that is ridiculous. On and out here. Oh, I don't know how he gets that kill. Zipnix not ready for him to jump up there. Thought maybe he'd move towards long, I presume. And now in a 1v2, it's winnable. He's got a kit, but utility, that's the last bit of it leaving his hands. It's caught in the window. It might blind the short player, but the one on ramp can still see and nothing being heard. Free spotted and taken down. Exist in a 1v1 now. He knows Glaive is down near the bottom of the ramp, but he wasn't ready for him to be swinging wide. 8-3. to three. A double kill from Freiburg. He holds down short so well. The molly pushes him back. He got blinded. He couldn't see where he was. And just caught on the edge of Goose, not making it back far enough. Caught his arm, I think, on the spray down. But 8-3, to three, he was 10 HP, easily deleted. And now Astralis are 
quite significantly in the lead. I mean, Dignitas need to have close to a flawless half to end up in a pretty decent position by the end of this. They avoid being taken down on middle, but spotting out that the AWP is watching it, that could prevent Exist from really doing much more around that part of the map. It won't prevent Halzerk, though. He's pushed straight up to top mid, and no one is here to protect Device. He's got it. Oh, he's seen the butt. The big booty of Halzerk's been spotted, and now it's been spanked. Yeah, and a headshot on the up. Maybe the head was even bigger. Unfortunately, not big brain enough on that play being spotted. But, yeah, I mean, we're not expecting much in this round from Dig. As you said, though, it is going to be a position for them where they need to be flawless with the remaining three rounds in the half to come out with six and feel even any what comfortable moving into that second half. I mean, they won the first two rounds of this half. We've seen one stray round going in their favor since then, and that was kind of the, the second gun round, I believe, when they were able to buy back in. The fix already confirming himself a couple of kills. It's actually Glaive who gets the two on towards A. Zipix does eventually get his second as well. And yeah, just pressuring everywhere on the map. There wasn't really a specific approach there. They just pushed everywhere and got the kills. Nine to three. They, they, you can see how confident they're feeling even. It's late. Maybe they want to get it over with because that's not normally <laughs> how you see Astralis approaching those rounds against pistols. No, man. They are, they are fighting like animals right now. And they're surviving so frequently. Look at their money. It's insane. I said... Uh, well, maybe three rounds ago, you didn't want them to end up in a spot where they couldn't, uh, you couldn't force them down to an eco. And here they are. Actually, I think it was five rounds ago. Just, they've been going by so quickly. You know what? Like, they, yeah. they just don't die. As I say, that Magisk falls. That's the first opening duel for Dignitas, but immediately traded back. Great nade onto Dupree's head. But he tags up Halzerk and forces him back. The Molotov going to ensure no further peaks as they look to move down towards CT. But hold on. Look who's already here. Forrest rotated down. He looks for the spam, giving away his position. But his device falls. Dupree goes down to 19 HP. And despite them oh. being on B, this actually... They will have spotted him. No? Surely. No, I thought they spotted him in the doorway. He crossed over and he could see them, but they couldn't see Glaive. He's got B all to himself. The bomb's on the rotate. And that's a disaster. I swear they saw him as they were running up the ramp. Apparently not. I, they mustn't have. Otherwise, they definitely wouldn't have been all walking in like that. But yeah, Glaive has just saved this round. That first kill, it was a little bit shaky, but then he doubled down, got the second on the player moving in through the door, and has left Halzerk with no options. Despite the bomb not even being planted as I was beginning that sentence, he still already had to call for the save, give him something to work with in this next round. They get 3,400, so in theory, they could scrape together a buy. They'd be looking at like 3,950 on the three of their players, a little bit extra on Getray. But if they were to obviously no nades, they'd be limited to just body armor likely. And even the op being saved right now isn't 100% because Halzerk has been spotted on long. And with the economy obviously that Astralis have, they have no uh, no cares really about hunting this down and losing players. They're willing to throw everyone at this if you would imagine. And yeah, one player already moving in. It's Glaive. He was blinded for a moment. That was his chance maybe to move forward, but waiting for his teammate to get closer on long. And Halzerk realizing that what was, that's actually what was happening, tried to push into long instead, because if he could get that one kill, maybe he would have been a bit more secure. We know that wouldn't have been true, because there was a second player coming in long, so he was as screwed as he could possibly be. But there's 10 for Astralis, double digits already. And probably not going to be a buy here for Dig, meaning that they likely fight back to actually try and get four here on the CT side, which is nowhere near enough, against, especially against a team like Astralis. Two rounds to go, and yeah, the, the auto snipers are already out. This is three ops, indeed. Oh, I didn't even realize it. Yeah, when an auto snipers <laughs> traded back to yeah, an op, yeah. <laughs> I figured it was a rifle. And get a rifle, a rifle as well. He just doesn't care. How many how many weapons were in play here? What is going on? But that just goes down to how much money they have. We mentioned it earlier. Zipix though, he might have money, but he doesn't have health. It doesn't translate, unfortunately. And an AK now picked up for exist. Maybe a shot for Dignitas, if. Astralis didn't very quickly move towards that B bomb site where Freiburg is to hold down by himself. He gets himself one, and that's all. And Device looking to cut them off. He missed that shot. Let's pretend we didn't see it. But he's been flanked out up on short. That should be Forrest taking him down. But in the pursuit of him, Exist was spotted out from the site. And now Forrest is left alone in a 1v2. With an op in hand, but the loss bonus allows them to buy two, three ops, four or five if they want. Why not? But he will still go for this. I highly doubt they'd buy five ops, but yeah, you can see Forrest indeed either way going for it, gets up close to window, and Magisk was actually already holding up close, which could have been in theory a little bit risky, but it works out quite well. Again, the ops coming into play, at least four of them. I don't think Zipix is going to be buying one. He has the long spawn, so he might just try run out long. 
But there is, as I said, that one more up on the ground from Magisk to pick up. This is going to be dangerous. So you, you obviously you imagine Dig smoke it off. They themselves having two ops, so we have five oh, no. in the hands of players, six actively in the round. <laughs> two players pushing long with ops. Three, in fact, the third man has one as well. The it's nade strange. though, that should be pinpoint on Zipnix. Good damage. And the smokes all around. That's going to prompt them backwards. Zipnix had actually recovered a. Sorry, he had an AK the whole time. I thought I saw him running down the ramp with an op. But evidently not. That's a little better, at least. They weren't just blitzing out long with two ops, like I thought. They don't get the progress they usually do. No connections on long. They're not coming in through mid on the back of Dignitas. Actually playing this one quite smart. They've got three players towards that B site. But Astralis, well, they know that eventually their opponents are going to predict something. They tried it before when Astralis went towards A, but his device falls. Now you're into a 5v4, and it looks like they might just go back to what was working. Right now, trying to challenge at least a small bit towards mid. The bomb is still up on short at the moment. Glaive is ready to swing at the bottom of the doors and Dupi to protect the tree. Uh, potentially on Xbox. Not allowed. Forrest actually got himself into a better angle there where he was able to isolate the one-on-one. -on -one. Been spammed up a little bit in return, but already having them a two-man advantage right now. It is not a bad spot to be in. Even hits the flick. Of what? Excuse me? Okay, that happened. Too many ops. They hit the flick to tag up Dupree, and Dupree maybe I scared him a little bit because he shot Magisk in the back of the head. <laughs> now they're left in a two on five going forward on A. Zipix pulls one back, but they're going to have to pull off a fantastic two on five here. And okay, Ooh. maybe. I mean, it is still, it is still Zipix alive. And Dupree at this point needs to make up for that previous team, ki team kill, so he might be fired up as well. Uh, not allowed though. The bomb just barely being planted. Zipix though caught in the smoke. Already like 10 health, and yeah, Freiburg finishes him off. That was a weird round though. Dupree was just killing everyone this half. He had to take it to his teammates as well. No man will survive. No one left untouched. 11 to 4 is how we finish out the half. Dignitas, they do all. And welcome back, everybody. We're rocking in to half number two between Dignitas and Astralis. Astralis leading the pack by quite a bit with 11 on the board. As Dignitas play the pistol round out with a bit of a spread, they're looking for any aggression. And I'm, I don't blame them. Astralis have been playing very, very loose so far. But on this pistol round, they don't look for much more than just that aggressive short control. As now the Xbox smoke goes down, that could maybe keep some in position. The issue is Astral uh, Astralis instantly realized that no one's actually moving with this because of the fact that the device is pushed up. The only real position they could be moving, the only way they could be moving towards this position is if they were creeping through lower, but we can see instead all five grouped up in the tunnels and looking to commit onto B. The initial dink's actually going in their favor, the nade helping it with the finish, but they're all blind, giving Magis quite a bit of time to tap away, eventually getting himself that second kill as well. It was a bit awkward with the help of Zipix and now also the device on the flank who they delayed to allow him to, to actually get into position. He eventually pops up and, yeah, exists as alone. He's going to have to show up massive right now. Our Astralis are going to be sitting with a pretty 12 to 4 lead and potentially more off the back of it. Especially if the bomb doesn't go down, we'd likely see the one eco from Dig. He's just trying to do what he can. There's already one player pushed out around the smoke, and he now knows that Glaive is shot off. One more on the bomb site being known. That flank though around mid, probably not going to be expected, although it gives him the chance. But they were also immediately ready to follow up through the window and the door. So probably not for too long, even if he got that kill, likely would have been traded. But good work from the Vice. Gets himself the frag, brings it up 12 to 4 for Astralis, and what was already quite a slim chance for Dignitas to make this map victory happen has unfortunately gotten quite a bit smaller for them now, quite a bit slimmer for them. They're going to have to take that win eco, as I said, without the bomb going down. That's the issue, right? If they take the bomb plant, at least then there's an opportunity for them to invest up and fight the Astralis boys where it hurts. But at the moment, it looks like Astralis should have a fairly clean second round and only then face any sort of uh, difficulty. Freiburg has even gone in for a deagle, which is going to hurt his buy coming into the next. But for one player to do that, it's not too bad. He's also the one leading the charge, taking the opening fights, at least in theory, in that initial push down middle and through short. And that gives him the opportunity to maybe find a kill. And if not, his teammates behind him to pick up that deagle when he falls. He needs to be careful about wide swinging. To a point where it's irretrievable. Freiburg getting dropped. The rest of the Glocks start popping off, firing away. The nade in the hands of Glade goes through, but it's a little too far behind. They're already out short. They're finding two kills. This is getting very awkward. Get right moving forward gets caught off by Dupree, but exists in with another, and he manages to pick up an M4. Now head peeking, spraying away, but four HP left as Dupree finds his third kill. Dean, that was a lot closer than it should have been. 
Yeah, coming down to a two on two is quite ridiculous. And there was even a chance there for Existy nearly won out that fight against the player who sprinted in, in true short to actually get mm -hmm. the final kill. I believe it was Dupree. Yeah. Uh, the, the issue is close rounds at this point aren't enough unless Dignitas are able to now capitalize off the back of that damage and take this first one round. Otherwise, it just doesn't matter at all. But at that point, Astralis will be on map and series point pretty happily for themselves. Obviously, the kills coming in do help them with keeping the money low. They can have a chance with winning this first one round and actually taking themselves control. But it also forced the Stralis to buy back up into mostly the M4s, apart from that single MP9 that they have kept in play. And already with Dupree aggressive in lower tunnels, they find the opening advantage to Vice then spots the head of Halzerk popping up in pit, and it's a five on three. Oh, and Zipix just doesn't care. It looked like he was going to go through that smoke as well. It does cost them in the end. And was actually tagged up heavily by Device. I'm not sure how that happened. Perhaps a nade, I believe. Glaive will be able to return one, so it doesn't make things too dicey for them now. It's still a 2 on 4 that they firmly have control of. Oh, okay, Device goes down, but the trade's not possible for Exist or for Forest. That's going to be the end of that. 14 to 4, closed out. Dignitas down to very low money yet again, but they might even consider Force buying. Playing for an overtime where you get 11 cons consecutive rounds just to take it to OT? Eh, it's not too likely. The decision is all theirs, and Get Right's already made it. Purchasing up fully. Still with a Glock. So I'm presuming he's dropped over an AK, and indeed it's on to yeah, yeah. exist. Everybody else plays around the uh, weaker buy of just Deagles. Uh, Tech 9 as well. They could have dropped one more rifle if they wanted to. Exist and Halzerk, though, and Freiburg keep a little bit of cash. So this is kind of half in, half out. And as Freiburg falls, a couple more are out. Away. I mean, the hope here was definitely being the bomb plant. Forrest can get himself to buy as well, but just barely. So the bomb plant would have given get right enough and also would have helped Forrest with getting utility. But so far, only the one kill being found, unfortunately. The weapon also not being retrieved. It was actually thrown away. There we go, Forrest, despite being low. Makes up a big headshot on the vice towards the middle. There is another player looking to face Pacific. He's not going to let any other kills be obtained by Dig quite yet. It is only get right now in the one on three. As map and series point is looking inevitable, it's going to be a very long road ahead of Dignitas if they want to make this comeback happen. And as we said, without the bomb plant, Get Right at least is going to be left on a weaker weapon. Forrest, with the kills he got, has confirmed that he actually has a pretty strong buy on the level of his teammates, pretty much. Dupree went in a little risky as well with that top mid push, considering the buy that you know you're going to be up against. It was definitely ballsy, but as we said, Astralis, they've been playing super loose, just pure confidence coming into it not only that obviously using the coordination as a team to propel themselves ahead you saw those two rounds where they just rush down lower mid to b but in this one it was a little bit more spread out although there was support on bottom mid it was quickly dealt with with any utility dignitas had and but as dupree fell obviously as you said zipnix the man on the screen was the one to swing through and take those two kills towards the top to ensure the rifle wasn't retrieved and shut down any hope of Dignitas making that one back. It's now going to have to be 11 consecutive rounds. It starts out with a glass cannon op for Halzerk. Everybody else has managed to obtain rifles and a decent amount of utility alongside the armor. Exist going to go straight out long, but he's still blind. He's been blind for about five minutes. Freiburg. Oh, he's trading them out. Ah, oh, Glaive Heron, the jump into the smoke, though, from Freiburg. I think he tried to jump out long, got caught on the edge of the wall, and... Yeah, Glaive while moving, gets himself this fray. Now it's back into a three on three, despite that strong start with Freiburg picking up two. They will try and react and go in through mid. Dupree has oh, no. gotten himself the control of the tunnels in the meantime. He's not going to realize that the bomb is coming in a little bit later from that position, so that could be a little bit awkward. Glaive also pushing through the C2 smoke, actually got himself a second before going down. But yeah, Dupree, this is a massive position. If he gets the bomb, this round is done. Forrest dinked up already, but he gets it. That was so crucial. Now they have B. Now they have the bomb plant, and they've given themselves a chance to actually fight back into this. But of course, they are still up against the vice. The vice is not going to let this one go. He fires off in the op. They know where he is. Halzerk. I don't know if he spotted him. The Molly's definitely going to give it away. The AWP is holding it, and the quick shot that closes it out. Forrest was in danger for a second. He took a lick of the Molotov, but that was it. 15 to 5. And Astralis, with their money, they're going to go in for the investment. Well, of course, with such a heavy lead, 10 rounds in ahead, they can definitely go for it. On um, pistols, on Zipnix and Dupree, maybe an SMG. No, it's actually going to be a Deagle on the 5.7. You can win for the rifles, and then Glaive, having the scout... Again, going to be looking for some damage from afar. But it isn't the best of buys. I'm, I'm honestly surprised that they go for it. Only one player spotted crossing middle. You'd imagine that will impact Dignitas' decision-making a little bit and where they're going to go. It's Glaive on 14 HP now, up towards B after that tag early. They are still sat heavily outside of the A bomb site, though. 
And Halser can still see cross, so he knows there's only one player towards B. Unless there's a little uncertainty as to whether someone slipped by. That can be a possibility, but I do believe that they should have been aware. We've seen the aggression from the vice over towards Shark being shut down. Trying to rec uh, trying to claim the long control, though. They do end up losing one player themselves on the Dignitas side of things. Forrest managing to catch one. Was that a long range 5-7? It wasn't that long range, but yeah, good trade to actually be found. Overall, though, with the weapons and the health favor and dig, they should still be able to come out on top of this round. Grouping up over towards long as well, where obviously the advantage of having the rifles on everyone is going to be even more important, or stand out even more, I guess would be a way to put it. There is still the short control, and Halzerk's taking his time, only now going to move in to join up with his teammates, and unfortunately, that's just as Dupree pushes through mid. That was horrible timing. Magisk might be able to do it. He's got it with the M4 if they want to win this round. Glaive! Oh my, that's a wallbang headshot up on the site. Freiburg's taken down. Oh. What a way to lose.